Good afternoon. I'm Congresswoman Grace Mang, and it's an honor to be here with all of you. Uh, thank you to, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you to Ronit Hassan Hockman, CEO of Jerusalem Post, to Yaakov Katz, our editor in chief, and for everyone at the Jerusalem Post uh, family for having me here today. Jerusalem Post has such an illustrious history of providing English language news to, about the Jewish state since even before 1948, and I'm so pleased to join with all of you today um, at your sixth annual conference. The safety and security of our close ally, Israel, is a primary concern of mine. It's why I'm proud of my record of ensuring that our ally, Israel, has the resources it needs to enhance its security and was happy that the memorandum of understanding between Israel and the United States was signed right before the High Holy Days this past September. At $38 billion over 10 years, this historic agreement is the largest single pledge of military assistance in United States history which reaffirms America's bipartisan commitment to the security of Israel. In my position, and I'm the newest member of the House Appropriations Committee, I started this work before I was on the committee. I've been able to work to increase funding for U.S.-Israel missile defense cooperations programs, such as Iron Dome, David Sling, and Arrow. And while Arrow is still in the R&D stage, we've unfortunately had to see that Iron Dome has had to be functional. And I'm grateful that it has served its purpose in defending against missiles. And I first got to witness the importance of these programs on one of my more recent trips to Israel when we were in Starot and as a mom of two young boys visiting a, a playground uh, where many of my, my, me and my colleagues asked, you know, how many minutes do our children have um, if they hear of danger, of the sirens? And they laughed at us. They said, it's not minutes, it's seconds. And so making sure that Israel is safe and has the tools to protect herself is of utmost importance to all of our children. And making sure we keep, and I know the senator spoke about it a little bit as well, but making sure that we keep Iran accountable is a huge piece of the U.S.-Israel relationship. As the first New York Democrat to oppose the Iran deal, it's a bipartisan event today. <laughs> I am still working with like-minded congressional colleagues on a bipartisan level to ensure that Iran is not able to subvert, subvert the goals of the deal. This includes writing and working with the Treasury Department to get answers about alleged dollarization and adding more checkpoints for Iran. I'm also a co-sponsor of important bipartisan legislation that targets Iran's ballistic missile and strengthens sanctions enforcements. And we're also working to uh, I propose legislation that would reauthorize the requirement that the president has to uh, report to Congress in the activity that is going on in and throughout the Iranian ports. We need to make sure that we know what and who is going through them. We need to track who is coming, who is going, and where they're going before and after their stops at these ports. And following their path allows us to better monitor uh, any activities to ensure that they aren't trading illicit and dangerous materials. So it's really timely that this conference is happening now. President Abbas was just at the White House, and President Trump is going to Israel in a few weeks. One of the issues that President Trump rightly brought up is the problem of Palestinian incitement and payments to terrorists in Israeli jails. When I was in the Foreign Affairs Committee, 
We often discussed this and held hearings questioning State Department and think tank officials, and we coordinated on bipartisan actions like letters and resolutions. Just last week, I joined my colleagues in sending a bipartisan congressional letter to the White House asking that the President bring up the issue of Palestinian payments to terrorists, and I'm appreciative that he took that into consideration. However, Abbas's denial of the reality of incitement is something we need to continue to strongly look into, and I will be doing so as a new member of the House Appropriations Committee. We all know how impressionable our children are, regardless of where you come from, and there simply cannot be peace anywhere if children are raised with hatred. Finally, I want to bring up an issue that is uh, unfortunately increasing, especially at our college campuses around right here in the United States, and that's BDS. This is an important component of being a strong ally since BDS at its core is about delegitimizing Israel and her economy. In Congress, we've worked on bipartisan legislation as well, uh, working with international organizations. There are bills in both the House and the Senate. There are bills that allow states and local governments uh, to have the tools and the right to dis disassociate pensions and contracts from entities that are practicing BDS. There is legislation that allows current and pending legislation and expands them to international organizations like the United Nations and the European Union. The hardest piece to tackle about BDS is on our college campuses and the educational aspect. I've been working a lot with my colleagues uh, to ask the United States Department of Education to look into anti-Israel activity that overlays with anti-Semitic activity. What we see is a lot of universities may say that there is a distinction, that the reality, but the reality is that most of the anti-Israel activities manifest itself as anti-Semitism, which means it can and should be addressed by the Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights. I'm proud to work with uh, CUNY campus, Queens College within my district, where BDS is not as serious of an issue, and I, we are in constant communication with a lot of our student groups, uh, including the Hillel uh, president, uh, Yuri Cohen, give Queens College a shout out here. <laughs> but in, the, in our conversations, we often discuss the importance of education and keeping an open mind uh, to making sure that the school and the campus uh, has an atmosphere where they are allowing and encouraging people to be pro-Israel. This is not the case in a lot of campuses. So while there are a number of challenges ahead, I'm happy to be working together in a bipartisan manner with my colleagues in the House and the Senate to address these every step of the way. I want to thank you for inviting me. I know that some folks in the audience are from Queens and New York City. I hope you had better luck at the traffic situation than me. <laughs> um, but it's really an honor to represent parts of Queens and really an honor to work uh, with the Jerusalem Post and all of you here. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out if you're in Queens or in Washington, D.C. And congratulations on a successful conference.